all of our customers are flying all of their Maxes daily around the world. The airplane is safe, and we're very confident in that. I got nightmares in my head. I fear thoughts build up until I can't hear. My mind fills up into a creature, and it haunts me somewhere much deeper. I got nightmares in my head. I fear the thoughts build up until I can't hear. That my mind fills up into a creature, and it haunts me somewhere much deeper. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Depending on who you pay attention to, Boeing is either wheeling badly in the airline arena or about to face a knockout punch. Remember Concord has had an immaculate safety record until one horrible crash shattered the airline permanently. Well, it could be that Boeing is one horrible crash from the same fate. Some industry experts are talking about the the straw that is breaking the camel's back. Are we at that point? It was a disaster that took the lives of 109 passengers and crew and also sounded the death knell for commercial supersonic travel. In this analysis, we want to examine the latest news and also what the reason is, simply, basically, for so many of Boeing's woes, I mean, from a design perspective. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. For those interested in the Van Gogh letters, we'll be dealing with six really amazing surprises in terms of Starry Night, that famous painting, in a special broadcast, episode 73, this Saturday. So look out for that on the Team Peachtree channel. If you're enjoying this analysis, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. Number one, latest news. Just today, and I mean, this news has been coming in fits and starts constantly. It certainly feels that way. Just today, and this is before the end of the first week of February, barely a month after the last news that we heard about Alaska Airlines, that panel blowing off. Now there's news that has come out of holes that have been improperly drilled. The term that's being used is misdrilled. To understand what this really means is that Boeing does some of its assembly of its own craft, but sometimes allows suppliers to assemble key parts of its aircraft. Ever ordered furniture online? Well, it's a little like that. If you're like me and you've assembled furniture perhaps in a rush while and not, not completely <laughs> looking at the instructions, you might have a few screws left over and sometimes your table ends up a little bit wonky as a result. Well, imagine that happening with an aircraft. According to CNN, quote, The problem was disclosed in a memo sent to Boeing employees Sunday by Stan Deal, the head of the company's commercial aircraft unit. An employee at Boeing suppliers Spirit Aerosystems, which makes the fuselages of the 737 MAX jets, notified the plane maker that two holes may not have been drilled exactly to Boeing's requirements according to Deal's memo. While this potential condition is not an immediate flight safety issue and all 737s can continue operating safely, we currently believe we will have to perform rework on about 50 undelivered airplanes, it said. Now, there have also been issues on Boeing's production line where unfinished jobs, either from suppliers or in situ, have a ripple effect disrupting the line. We'll talk about that in a moment. Now, what's clear to see, even from a distance, is that Boeing is trying too hard to meet financial deadlines, which both causes and compounds safety issues. If there are potential problems for passengers in this debacle, there is also some serious pushback from suppliers, essentially Boeing's own customers. According to CNN, quote, Two major customers, United Airlines and Southwest Airlines, said last month they were no longer counting on receiving their orders of new versions of the 737 MAX they had been promised by Boeing. Southwest had been expecting the 737 MAX 7, while United had ordered the MAX 10. Neither plane has been approved by the Federal Aviation Administration to carry passengers. 
And now another major international carrier has also joined the fray, Emirates. Emirates is a big deal. According to the Financial Times, the head of Emirates Airline has, what is his name, Sir Tim Clark. He's warned Boeing was in the last chance saloon. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Emirates saying Boeing is in the last chance saloon. People are going to need to start sitting up and paying attention to what's going on with Boeing. He has said that he's preparing to send his own engineers to oversee the plane makers' production lines. In other words, Emirates are sending their own engineers to Boeing to, to basically make sure things are going, things that are happening are proper. And he said, um, you know, after witnessing a long decline in its manufacturing performance, now they want to see for themselves that things are, are, are okay, are adequate, are appropriate. And this is why this is serious, and this is why I'm covering it. It's the idea that these accidents aren't random, but rather that the underlying issues are systemic. They're starting to catch up. If they are, well, then there will be more accidents. Let me say that again. If these underlying issues are systemic, then there will be more accidents. And an accident you expect is not an accident. It's inevitable. And that is why we need to apply critical thinking to Boeing. Now, according to the Financial Times, Sir Tim Clark has said that he's seen a progressive decline in Boeing standards, which he put down to long-running management and government missteps, including prioritizing financial performance over engineering excellence. I don't think that means Sir Tim Clark is some kind of rocket scientist, someone who's reading a crystal ball and seeing something that no one else is seeing. That is basically the same story in the Netflix documentary Downfall, Go and watch it tonight if you haven't already seen it. To go back to the article, quote, Emirates is one of Boeing's biggest customers. And in November, they placed an order for 95, almost 100, wide-body Boeing 777s and 787 jets used for long-haul flights. That transaction was valued at $52 billion at list prices. So what needs to happen going forward? Well, according to Sir Tim Clark, he says they've got to instill a safety culture. They've got to get their manufacturing processes under review so there are no corners cut, etc. He went on to say, I'm sure that the chief executive, Dave Calhoun and Stan Deal, the commercial head, are dealing with that or on that particular uh, aspect. And then he reiterated, this is the last chance saloon. Now, can a company overcome its own greed and get back to work properly with the proper protocols? More pertinently, will shareholders let them, even if they want to get back to work, want to honor these safety pro protocols, are shareholders going to allow this? Will Boeing shareholders used to making a fortune be okay with losing money? And that brings us to the second part, design flaw. Why are there so many issues with Boeing? Well, my understanding is that Airbus wrong-footed Boeing when it produced, and I'm not exactly sure which craft it was, but it basically came out with a, a new design and then Boeing felt they had to do something. Uh, you could say that it was the A380 in 2007. It could also be part of the legacy of the smaller A320, the world's most popular aircraft at the moment. You could say that one or both of these, or that these were part of what propelled Boeing to start cutting corners. Competition from Airbus, from particular craft that were doing better than, than theirs. And so they try to come up with something quickly to compete with Airbus. And as far as I know, instead of starting from scratch with a new design, which would have been expensive and required time-consuming safety certifications, Boeing instead made just a few design changes to the original design of the 737. What they did was they added bigger and stronger and more economical engines. They thought, you know, with a few little nips and tucks, um, everything will be fine. You know, it's essentially a new aircraft. But... Um, 
it wasn't quite as easy as that. Some of these engines, well, all of these engines had to be moved slightly forward on the wing. And that then kind of changes the whole design aspect quite quite significantly because this creates issues with the original craft that the original craft was never designed for. And as far as I understand it, Boeing dealt with these issues by installing software to help pilots fly the plane, including MCAS. I'd like to see Boeing come out, personally, this is my view, with a new product. I'd like to see them, they've done it before, they've been good in, in engineering. Stop trying to give the 737 MAX a, sev- a second life and produce something new. Go back to the drawing board and pay the price and, and come out with a new product that works, like Airbus did. And so I think how and when they respond to this question may well determine Boeing's fate at the end of the day. You know, Stop pushing the 737 MAX. Instead, start developing a new product. Incidentally, I also think our species and many of us individually are faced with a similar choice. Do we keep kicking unsustainable cans down the road, which is more dangerous to ourselves and our fellow man? Or do we do the, the more difficult thing, but the right thing, and start over and do things right from the beginning? In an article from Wired, a reporter notes, quote, To adapt an old uh, Oscar Wilde quote, to lose one aircraft may be regarded as a misfortune. To lose two looks like carelessness. Of course, there's another word that seems more accurate than carelessness, greed. How good are we at resisting that, would you say? Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.